Sophia further five times in the intervening 21 years. And of course, Ronnie is our defending champion this year. But he's also been runner-up five times as well and is today bidding for an extraordinary 12th final. But the man who's aiming to knock him off course today is playing some of the best snooker of his career. He is Hong Kong's Marco Fu. I've been in the semis in the Masters a couple of times, I think, in the past, and yeah, it's nice to be able to do it again. I've, I've played quite well since the UK Championships and brought the form to here as well, so I would love to keep the run going, but it's not going to be easy. It's nice to be able to play good snooker against the top eight players. It's just a great feeling that everything seems to be working together. If I play Jimmy, I play Ronnie in the past in the Masters and everybody knows what the atmosphere is going to be like. Yeah, I think he's under pressure as well from uh, the expectation from the crowd. And I'm under pressure because I need to play the play and also play the crowd. So I think we're both under pressure. It doesn't get much bigger than that. So I'm really looking forward to hopefully another great match. Well, Mark has won eight of their 22 previous matches, including the Grand Prix final 10 years ago. But it was only about five weeks ago that O'Sullivan and Fu faced each other in the semi-final of another of snooker's majors, the UK Championship in York. And that went to a decider won by the Englishman. And whilst Ronnie went on to lose the final, the Hong Kong player has since embarked on a magnificent run, winning the Scottish Open and producing some immaculate snooker here too. And what's more, Marco is now the highest ranked player left at Ali Pali as the world number eight. John. This is worthy of a final itself. Yeah, down here in the commentary box with the, the people who have been providing your words for your pictures and Dennis Taylor, nice shirt by the way, while well, you're back on Strictly Come Dancing. Um, the interesting thing for me today is it's Marco Fu, he's 39, he's playing the best snooker of his career, but this is a magnificently big occasion today. Is he going to cope with it? It certainly is, and this Alexander Palace crowd have really taken to the man from Hong Kong, especially the way he played against Judd Trump. That match was incredible. He made three century breaks and a string of other breaks. Judd played out of his skin and lost. So uh, he's got to produce that sort of form against Ronnie if he's going to have uh, a chance. The thing I think with him... Basically, his demeanour's changed, doesn't it? He's walking around the venue, his, his, you know, his chest back, he's standing you know, very straight up. He looks like he's really in confidence in his own ability. I think he's working with Terry Griffith's son, Wayne. Wayne's moved out to Hong Kong, and when Marco's there, they work together, and I think that's a big help to him. He's always been a, a really nice lad, but I'll tell you what, he isn't half producing some fabulous snooker, but he'll have to do it against Ronnie O'Sullivan. Jealous, Stephen? Of the plane, and it's ab ab absolutely. Um, yeah, it's, it's going to be very interesting. If you go in the form so far in a tournament, Marco's favourite. But, you know, as you and Steve said, Ronnie has got previous in, in, in this, this tournament. What, what I've been impressed with Ronnie so far this week is his will to win. He's not been anywhere near his best, but he's looked like he really wants to. Every, every match, he, he's, he's trying his hardest. We talk about scoring, and you in particular talk about a lot. Ronnie's mm -hmm. got her up at him. His highest break against Neil Robertson was still only 68, so that's got to get better, hasn't it? Absolutely. But uh, we all know he can turn it on at any, any stage. Um, and what better stage today to do it? OK, boys, be interested to listen to you this afternoon. Rob Walker, let's get it underway. Good afternoon. Rock and roll this afternoon at Alexandra Palace. <laughs> Please welcome a player who after 19 years as a pro is producing the best snooker of his career so far, beating Higgins last month to land the Scottish Open, and this week he's beaten both Trump and Allen to earn a second Masters semi-final. Will the magic come forth once again from the man from Hong Kong, Marco Fu? <laughs> His opponent, a man who first won this title in 1995. For more than two decades, he has been Snooker's box office draw, six times a Masters champion, five times a champion of the world, the Rocket, Ronnie O'Sullivan. <laughs>
Always jumping. Good afternoon, Hazel. Thank you. The first frame. Ronnie O'Sullivan to break. And a very good afternoon to everyone watching. What a fabulous atmosphere and what a thrill it must be for both players to walk into the arena to that reception. Really was special. Can Marco start the match with a long pot? Where's that point? He's okay. So he's got a couple what? of loose reds. He's on a colour, so an early chance. Can he continue playing in the form that he showed us throughout the week, Stephen? Since the UK Championship, when he was, I think it was a green or a brown with a rest away from beating Ronnie in the semi final Four. of that event. Since then, I think he's made a couple of tweaks technically. Might get a chance to see it. It's slightly longer backswing than normal. Five. But he's starting to look the real deal, Dennis, when it comes to these big events. I mean, he's always been a fantastic player. Every, everyone in snooker knows that, but. He would sort of go maybe one or two months, you know, playing well and then disappear. To me, if he keeps playing like this, he's going to be competing at every big event. Nice aggressive shot. Might just be okay, you know. Ten. Caught the pink half ball instead of full ball, but there is a red will go. But I think the white might cannon into the pink here, which wouldn't be a bad thing. It looks a natural. Well, he's taking the. This is much more difficult than the one he's taking to stay on the black. Oh, he didn't. I, th I just thought Marco he might have taken ten. the other one, which was a slightly easier pot. Yeah, this was a very the aggressive red to take. And he started off straight into the bun straight away, so maybe that's his plan. Take the game to Ronnie. a very good shot the fact he's covered the red that's near the right corner he had the yellow and the blue there to use his snookering balls and he played it well can Marco return the compliment no he's just playing dead weight but he still covered that red that's near the pocket picked out there but a bit of pressure on the next pot he certainly opened the reds up if this blue goes in great chance oh. well, there was a, a bit of pressure on that on one so early one. on in the match Still expected Ronnie to knock that in, but uh, it is the opening frame. opportunity now for Marco Fu. Maybe just taking a few moments just to calm down such a massive entrance for both players to the semi-final. Important 
plays at his own pace. Five. Six. And getting the blue back up onto its own spot will help the situation because the pink's out of commission. Marco turned professional in 1997 and based himself in Scotland. Um, well, he was with your, your team at the time. Uh, yeah. Did you used to practice with Marco at Spencer's Club that's no longer there now in Stirling? Yeah, there was, there was two or three professionals. You used to have some games with Marco. He's always been a, a big solo practicer. Doesn't practice a lot with other players. No, he used to have the odd game. He used to be Twelve. periods of three, four, five frames where he just never miss. Of course, he learned the game in Canada. He was based out there for a while. It goes without saying, the red to the, the right of the black is the one he wants to move. He wants the black available to both corner pockets. 20. So a nice angle. The red directly above the black. You want to cannon that. And you want to play it at a decent pace because there's every chance he could snooker himself on the red to the right corner. That's why I played it a little bit harder. 27. Twenty-eight. just got a feeling today it's going to be a high scoring match so chances like this taking them at your first opportunity I think are going to be very important Thirty-six. Sullivan hasn't been in his best scoring form this week but you get the feeling it's going to come out sooner or later I think you'll have to today, Dennis, for him to beat Marco. Absolutely, and the fact that he missed that uh, medium length blue Forty. is an early worrying sign because Marco's going to take full advantage. He's had to have uh, two chances in this frame. He, he missed right along the black cushion here and had Ronnie have knocked the long blue in. I'm sure he would have gone on to, this is the blue, had he have potted Hold that, up. I'm sure he would have made a sizable break. Yeah, you mentioned Dennis about it being the first frame, and, but yeah. normally we're, we're used to seeing Sullivan start so quickly. So that black is the first frame. Seven. In the first frame. Fifty-eight. Such a fantastic scorer, Marco Fu. Yeah, he's made four hundred and thirty-nine centuries in his career. That's terrific. Forty-one centuries this season. Already on 31 this season. Seventy-three. Seventy-four. Eighty-one. Eighty-two. And a kiss on the black's okay. Yeah, 
We've had 20 centuries so far in this year's Masters. And I'll tell you what, if you want to get a crowd 89. on your side, this is the way you do it. Oh, he's missed it. He's missed it. Unlucky. Almost a certain century there, but what a start for the man from Hong Kong. Ronnie well, missed that blue, and that was the end of the frame. Marco Fu leads 1-0. That Ronnie missed. You know, there was pressure on that, but that'll get magnified if he keeps making clearances, Marco. Here we go. Just a little bit short of pace with the break off shot, but this red that Ronnie's looking at, Marco knocked a similar type of red in. It was maybe slightly easier than this, but can Ronnie avoid the black? He's not even. Taking the pot on, it's just a safety shot. Don't blame him. And he is one of the best tactical players in the game. We tend to forget that sometimes. That certainly opened the Reds up, and look at the length of the cue ball. They seem to really open up nicely on this very fast cloth. The table's been playing beautifully all week. This Marco wasted no time. He literally just put the table down and got down. That was, that was incredible. One. So confident at the moment. There was no looking at the shot. He knew what he wanted to do. There's an example. Marco Fu is never blessed. Whenever there was a power shot, that was his weakness, his Achilles heel. You could see then, Six. he's bringing the cue back a lot further than he used to. And the power he got on that cue ball was phenomenal. Now if he dropped this red into the middle pocket, he could get the black back onto its spot. Seven. Now the black's still going to be slightly tied up because it's blocked into both corners, but he can play on one of the reds, remove that and just clear the path for the black into certainly one corner pocket. And this might have finished a little awkward 14. for him. As I mentioned, the black doesn't go into the right corner, and he's hampered slightly with the black to force it up for the blue. And that's very tight, the red he's looking at. That would be better to get him up to the blue if he can. Maybe the black goes into the left corner, because he was thinking about swerving around the black there. Maybe it does pass that red. It was awkward because he had to really power it in to get to the blue. And the white jumped a few times, which happens when you're striking down on the cue ball like that.
can beat a nice flick, and he certainly got one there. Can make such a difference that it was a good shot anyway, but just to catch the yellow and slide in behind the brown was a bonus. This is the two cushion escape. Yeah, it just caught the red before the pink. A little bit of surprise. He had the shot down to the two cushions and into the, the reds that were that are just above the black. If he'd gone into them dead weight, I don't think he'd have left much. So it took a bit of a risk there, Marco Foot. just kept on rolling and rolling. It looked as if he was almost certain to stop on a ball color. I think he can still get through to the yellow, but then White just kept on rolling on this very fast cloth. Can he see enough of the green? Yeah, that'll get him back to the reds. Four. Now he's got a decent chance. Atmosphere though, Dennis, out there in this Alexander Palace Arena. 11. Absolutely packed. Plus. Yeah, the crowds have been fabulous all week. And they're enjoying this. Delicate little cannon there just to open a few more up. So Marco 19. made it. An 89 break in frame one. 20. How many will Ronnie make here? Well, it just looks like a practice setup now, doesn't it? Virtually nothing to do with the cue ball. You shouldn't see the cue ball travel very far at all in between shots. 27. I think he's travelled a little bit too far that time. So change of plan up for the blue or pink now. 28. Correct side of the blue, so should be okay after the next shot. Once again, he's travelled too far. Well, he's played 41. two or three little positional shots, which is very unlike Ian Sullivan. And then you can see the frustration. Normally, the cue ball is on a string when he's round about the black. A couple of shots ago, had to go up for the blue. And there is Mr. Cannon. He won't play the shot like that. It would be a foul. You've got to have one toe on the floor. But that, uh, he gave that cushion a good old wrap there. I remember, was it Michael Holt did that? And I think he, did he break his finger? Oh, this, he's got to be so careful going between those two reds. He 
he's going to have to just play the safety shot. And I mean, he, he wanted really to push the boat out there. He was so frustrated with that positional shot. But uh, yeah, I think he's calmed down and he'll play the correct shot. <coughs> Still fuming. But this is where he's been impressive in his first two matches, Dennis. Although he is fuming with that shot, his temperament's been excellent this week. On Neil Sullivan, 41. <laughs> it was as if he wanted to bite the tip off there. was a certainly not a gimme that long pot for Marco Fu. There was a chance to really rub salt in the wound there if you get in and win this frame at that visit. table he's going the other side which is a little bit more risky there's two reds to avoid and he has avoided them and he might drop in behind the green he was playing for the cushion but uh, it's not a snooker he can see the one to the left but if he takes this pot on, and he'll have to do, because there's no easy safety shot. Well, we've seen him miss a blue in the opening frame, which cost him that first frame. Can he knock this one in? No. And I'll tell you what, as Stephen said, if Marco Fu can punish Ronnie, He'd still be thinking about that poor positional shot he played when it looked like he was going to make quite a big break. This wasn't easy. One. We're only in the second frame, but... This is a massive visit to the table from Marco Fu. Such a psychological game, snooker at the top level. If you can put one on your opponent early on. Eight. This is where he just ran a little bit too far and was very annoyed with himself. Yeah, I think he was trying right. to play the cannon on the red to the right. This is if the this didn't get a side. He's just playing it with a little left hand side to just cannon the red to the right there as the cue ball goes past it. Very unlike Sullivan. Seventy. He needs the black back on that spot in a couple of shots time. And the reason I say that is that red that's on the cushion, it would be a lot easier to get onto the black if it was sitting on its own spot. Two. Yeah, Dennis, so important not to leave that red till last. Because there's every chance you don't get on it properly, and then you have to play safe. So I'd be playing for it now, 
screw off the side cushion. Well, he's not done. You can play now. This red is playing now. Finish high in the black and then play for the red on the cushion. Thirty-one. It may have travelled too far. No, nope, he's fine. So this is a shot for the frame, Dennis. You'd feel. Just has to drop it in dead weight and give the pocket a chance. You've seen a lot easier black than this. Yang Rambo had to knock Romeo Sullivan out of this year's Masters, and he just hit it a little too hard, but. This is much tougher, so dead weight will give the pocket a chance. And you've got the perfect picture there. No. No. Out of 38. Now that is quite a big turning point so early on in this match. One. Provided Ronnie goes on and takes the frame. A little awkward with the pink sitting on the yellow spot. So he might even play for the pink this time. Nine. Big opportunity missed though by Marco Fu. If you touch the cushion and you don't usually see any reaction from Marco, but he knew. That was a big shot that he just missed there. Fifty. Seven. Green, brown and blue will be enough. Yeah, what it's done by Marco missing that opportunity is it's given Ronnie Sullivan the chance to forget all about that frame because he's won it. If Marco wins it, 24, then he still thinks about it. Quite a tense frame, this second frame, but in the end, Johnny O'Sullivan, I'm not surprised he's leaving the arena, just lost his cool momentarily there, but he got the other chance and he took it, and we're all square, one frame each. Three, Johnny O'Sullivan. Fascinating start to the semi final. Oh, what was that, Marco? Long way short. Well, maybe he can't see enough of that red that's just to the right of the black to cut it in. Any yeah, other reds preventing that? Red the left side of the table is just a little awkward for the safety shot. You've got to make sure you don't cannon into that on the way back down. And that's why he's not coming off the side of the pack. He may attempt this to get onto the black as a shot to nothing. No, just a straightforward up and down safety shot.
opportunity to drop this red in for the black. Marco's daughter there, isn't she beautiful? Yeah, that's your daddy out there playing and I think she's just seen herself on the screen. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Marco smiling up at his, his family, but he's going to get his mind on the job. Semi-final of the Masters, one frame each against Ronnie O'Sullivan. A little bit of a stalemate now that that red has gone up the other end of the table. just roll into the reds and we might possibly get a re-rack. <coughs> well, what has he spotted here? Yeah, just a gap to get him back to the cushion and played it well. Just take a few shots to resolve this situation. Yeah, as long as the cue ball keeps ending up close to this cushion, there's not a lot you can do. If the cue ball's away from the cushion, you can play a more aggressive shot. You can open the reds up and bring the cue ball back. But even then, that shot you're Sometimes frightening knocking a red over one of the middle pockets, so yeah, could be a while here. We'll never catch on this kind of snooker, will it, Dennis? Wasn't your favourite type of frame this? Well, neither player will like this, but sometimes run like that and you get the balls up the other end of the table but what does happen when a player gets in there's going to be plenty of reds there to score from now that one to the left middle is quite a risky one but he's had a quick look at it and he's uh, decided 
definitely against taking it on. But that's a bit careless. He's made a, a complete hash of the safety there. OK, a little bit unlucky. You never know where the reds are going to finish, but he didn't get the white where he wanted. And now the chance is there for Marco. Marco Fuz just put himself in a bit of trouble here. Do you know, he might have to play a safety shot off Three. the green and go up near the black with the cue ball. Golden chance he's let slip there. back to the black cushion there's always chances of putting reds over middle pockets and he's done that the last two shots now again here no guarantee where the cue ball is going to end up just make sure the pot well they've settled for that Give me this blue, but there's a bit of pressure on it with the way the reds are situated. But get this in and one opportunity. Didn't cue that as smoothly as he was in the first frame. Six. Put it in the right hand side of the pocket and didn't get correctly on the red. That's why he's having to play this round the angles. Seven. Just over screwed it slightly. You want it to be straighter on this brown. It shouldn't be a problem. Seventy. You're going to have to pot an awful lot of balls here to get a sizable number of points. Because they're all low-valued colours. Twenty-one. that just to see what's available there. So Quite he's still. way ahead of himself and he feels that maybe he can drop the blue and he's back looking at that red to the right of the pink and it looks as if it's on. That just shows you how far 
ahead. The players thinking it's usually a couple of shots, very rarely more than 27. three shots ahead of yourself, four shots. You're just playing the cue ball into an area each time, but you you weigh up the table and you know that it's going to be there. And he had looked at this red about three shots ago. Didn't get into the cue ball like he wanted. He wanted to be much straighter in this blue. This is now awkward. If he's playing a cannon on a red directly above the blue, it'll go wrong, but no, he's had a natural angle. So. A little bit fortunate there to leave that natural angle. 33. 34. They seem to be all covering each other, the four reds around the pink. So he's potted seven reds, but uh, he's only accumulated 34 points because he's had to take lower valued colours. That must be a plant. 39. Just going slightly to the left side of the pocket, but he can make that. Oh. I think it's important for Marco to. Uh, win this frame now just to forget that red that he 46. missed along the cushion that would have given him a 2-0 lead. 47. But he's always been blessed with a terrific temperament also. a little bit of an awkward frame at the start with the Reds going up the other end of the table. And in the end, Rami attempting to get back to the black. Well, he did do, but he left one 15. to the middle. 16. It's the frame well and truly safe now. Best of 11, the interval still after four frames. 64. 65. Yeah, that is clearing up. That's his wife, Shirley, that's there with their daughter. Seventy-two. Almost made a century in the opening frame. He's got another chance here. Just noticed that Ronnie's looking 85. at the tip of his cue there. Mm. I know he. 85. He made a gesture as if he was going to bite the tip off, but I think that was a bit of frustration. 88. 
So normal play resumes, you'd have to say, from Marco Fu. This is great stuff. Right, two. Yeah, he's looking very composed again. 97. That's his fifth century. Absolutely terrific stuff from the man from Hong Kong. And in goes the black and absolutely secure for this third frame. Marco leads by two frames to one. On the queue, there it is. How is it going to react? How is he going to react to this situation? Marco, 2 1 up. That is the question, how will he react to that new tip? But I'm with John Parrott. If anyone can do it, Ronnie O'Sullivan can. He seems to be able to just put a brand new tip on and play straight away. Not the sort of thing the player would want, but he's pretty okay, good at doing it, Steve. Mark. Yeah, and, and, I, and I think there's Mark. been advances yeah. in the way they make tips these days um, to sort of 15, Thank 20 years ago. Four. It used to take me Mark two, three, three, four days to knock a tip in. They seem to be able to make them. They're a lot firmer. You can get grades of, of how hard the tip is, and the last time I had a tip put on my queue last year, I was able to play with it straight away. It was just, it was just the way the tips are made now. So, not quite the drama, um, I think that everyone's making out, but still, in a semi-final of a major event, not ideal. Meanwhile. Marco's made a terrific break-off shot. It's not going to be hard enough. Foul. Coming up a little bit short, so I suppose on that type of shot, you know. Difficult to judge at the best at times. Well, you would say, Dan, a wee bit of pressure on whoever put the tip on, wouldn't there? Thought he could take the double on and he wouldn't leave anything, only the red he was trying to double and he has left it. So, a little bit of a tester, long pot. Let's see if he can knock this in and give himself a little bit of confidence in that new tip. One. Thank you. Judging by the, the sound that made, it sounds it's a little bit on the, the softer side. Four. Five. Come up a little bit short, but... Uh, you can still play the cannon. The other side of the coin, of course, is if he wasn't happy with the tip that was on it, and now he what? finds a tip that is happy with, we could see a different Ronnie O'Sullivan. It could give him a massive boost of confidence. Thirteen. Just about okay. He can hold for the red that's up to the right of the blue here. Night. Twenty.
25. Well, surely 26. he can't make a frame winning break with a brand new tip on the queue. You wouldn't put it past him. Thirty-four. Thirty-nine. Oh, that got a terrible Four. contact there. It's He's still on the black, but not as nicely as he would have been without the, the kick. Just watch this. Mm. Forty-seven. Well, he certainly looks a lot happier around the table, Stephen. Yeah, there's no doubt. He's a lot more comfortable with the tip that's on the queue now than the one that was on previously. He did mention in the 50. studio after his last match that the tip was very hard that was on his queue, so when the tip's a little bit tiny, a little bit softer, 54. it just gives you more feel. Perhaps why. That's why a couple of his positional shots have been going awry. But he looks a different player. 61. Yeah, quite remarkable, it has to be said. Gone a little bit too far here. Seventy-three on the red, but you wouldn't see it being a problem. It's only made one 74. century so far in this year's Masters. Seventy-nine. Not, Eight. Not going to be easy to make a century. Certainly with the red on the left side cushion. And this frame's only been going uh, just over seven minutes. Everything's going in. <laughs> If he can square this 95. up and play the double. No double, no century, but I'll tell you what, with a brand new tip on his cue, he's come out and knocked in a 95 weight. Absolutely incredible. We're all square, two frames each. Impressed enough that it, it sort of plays like it normally is going to for the rest of its lifespan, but. Great adjustment by Ronnie O'Sullivan there. Extraordinary. Here we go. Frame five. It's two frames off. That's a pretty good break off shot as well. <laughs> Can't really take this pot on and play for the black. It's just the wrong angle for that. Might still have a go at it. Did manage to get round the back. Thank you. But good cue ball. There's the.
tools of the thread for the snooker player. Not sure about the light or what he's going to do with that. <laughs> Just maybe burn up a few of the fibers off. He was polishing the side of the tip so that you, you don't see it when you're looking down the queue. Looks as if he's taking this on. He may have just held for the pink there, so it was worth the risk. Okay, the red's near the pocket, but look at the queuing. He won't be potting that one, you wouldn't think, but he has to remove it from the pocket. But if he bridges over all these reds and knocks this in, It'll be some shot. That is awkward. Very tough situation there. He might just have gotten away with it slightly. Wanted to hit it full ball when he hit the cushion. But there is a long one, and he can get on the black. Nine. So, a chance for Marco to get back to work. Obviously, he's had that interval after the third frame, which wasn't planned. He's sat and watched Ronnie win the last round one visit, so we'll see if that's interrupted Marco's rhythm. Sixteen. This has developed into quite a good opportunity here for Marco. Just overscrewed it slightly. 22. He wanted to be straight around that red. It's closest to the pink, so it's a change of plan. Twenty-three. That's okay with the cue ball there because he's got very little to do with it. Just drops the blue and he's got a choice of reds for the left corner. Well, I think you said at the start of the match, Stephen, you're going to 
see quite a few high breaks here. I think your prediction is going to come through because he's had an 89 in the opening frame, 110 in frame three. And only had a 95 in the previous frame, so it's building up very nicely this semi final. It could be a cracker. 35. Thirty-six. Forty. Look at an inch too too short. I may have to play there at the second red, not the one he played for. I think you see the left of the two. I don't know if he's straight enough on the bottom one to f follow through for the black. From that angle, looks like it's okay. 44. Yeah, just a little bit more pace to make sure he got on the black, and he's followed through again a couple of inches further. So he's going to have to cannon that end red, the red furthest to the right of the bunch. Yeah, perfectly played. Fifty one. That was the key shot to paving the way to making a frame winning break here. Fifty two. Fifty-nine. Sixty. And he's judged a couple of those shots, Stephen. You know them little cannons. He's played them perfectly, hasn't he? Yeah, lovely touch. Very economical style. He's starting to look like a machine. Sixty-seven. And you get in amongst the balls. Sixty-eight. Seventy-five. Seventy-six. He's in line for the high break prize. Uh, in this year's Masters, he made a break of 140. 50. He's had five centuries so far this week. 82. Yeah, I think he made 11 or 12 83. in winning the Scottish Open just before Christmas. So I was going to say, just turn it into a scoring machine. It's the biggest attribute right. you can have as a top snooker player, to be able to win frames in one visit like this on a regular basis. 91. 91. And from a psychological point of view, after watching Ronnie win the last frame with a 95 98. break on a new tip, this is just what the doctor ordered from Marco Fu. 99. And also... How quickly is he playing? I mean, I know it helps when you're in perfect position every shot. Brilliant. <laughs> Absolutely superb from Marco Fu. It's the 22nd century 107. so far this week. One hundred and fourteen. There you see, look at 160. that. <laughs> Often someone's a quicker shot time on Ronnie O'Sullivan. 
But again, down to the fact that he's got the cue ball on a string. 119. Well, it's not down to his coach, that's for sure. Uh, well, his coach is Wayne Griffiths, but originally it was with Terry Griffiths, so he didn't get that 16-second shot selection from Terry. 123. He could beat... <laughs> He could beat his own high break by one point. What an effort. One hundred thirty four. Made absolutely sure of the Blackwater response from Marco through. He quietly gets the balls out of the pocket. But he's just cleared the table with a magnificent break of 141. And he's back in the lead at 3-2. Yeah, and again, we're always going about as well as, as well as other things that Marco Fu's got going for him is his temperament. So the circus that went on with the match before, finishing a frame early for the interval, the whole thing to do with Ronnie's tip, everything surrounding it, the drama. Ronnie comes out, makes a 95, and he just calmly gets down and knocks 141. And in how long? Seven minutes? Eight minutes? Yeah, I said uh, <laughs> it was just what the doctor ordered from Marco Fu. And, and talking about doctors, there's a, a doctor in the house. That's Dr. Miriam Stoppard with her two sons there. And Ed's an actor on the left. And we've, we've got Will on the right, but she's a delightful lady. I spent four weeks in India with her. The new series will be coming out next month, The New Marigold Hotel. And she was a delight to be with, and she's got a lovely smile. Thank you, frame six. Marco for the break. One. Quality opening red here. Ronnie O'Sullivan had to aim down slightly on the cue ball to create that angle to get around the back of the black. Four. You'll have enjoyed watching that break from Marco Fu and also enjoy the challenge of trying to get the better of it. Maybe enjoys the wrong word. Appreciated, Dennis. You don't enjoy sitting in your chair watching your opponent clear up. And you'll have appreciated the skill of it. <coughs> Twelve. Thirty. match with Judd Trump that Marco had was quite extraordinary, but this is 20. building up to a similar type of match. Judd had two centuries, a few other really high breaks, but Marco was awesome in three centuries 21. in that match. He's already had two in this, but Ronnie looks a different player, it has to be said. And he's certainly feels comfortable with this uh, new tip. 26. Thirty-four. 
35. Tough bunch of reds to go into from this angle, but he's one of the best in the business at picking out the right cannon. But it's so easy to stick on these. Well, when you see that shot again, his head is absolutely perfect. Right? He needs to hit the red, 42. the third red along on the right, on the right-hand side of that red, so it pushes it into the bunch. He could not hit that any better. The, the three reds above the black, that one, he has to hit on the right-hand side of it. Any other part of that red, they don't open. 43. Fantastic shot. Well, I'll tell you what, it's an absolute pleasure to be sitting commentating on this sort of match. It 46. really is fabulous to watch. Look at the pot success rate. 47. Yeah, apart from Luke, he looks like he loves this new tip on the cue. But I think, 52. as I said already, he'll be enjoying this challenge that's up against him today. 53. Playing a man at the top of his form, as Marco Fu is. Six. 61. These frames are not lasting very long, are they? The frame safe now. Full concentration 69. to see if he can respond with a century break. He can't beat the high break, that's for certain. But uh, well, even if he doesn't make a century, it doesn't really matter. But great response, this. Marco can't do anything about it. 75. And this Alexander Palace crowd, they are being royally entertained here. This closest to the black. If not, the cannon. No, it will go. 86. <laughs> 87. Well, wow, this is stunning. Absolutely stunning snooker. Ninety-four. Ninety-five. In between the yellow, yellow and brown. Played it was straight forward there. Oh, two. two cushions. And then at the ball, but that's another century. One hundred and four. Ronnie's first of the match. And he's made. 858 centuries now in his career. And then who's seven. Going to bet against him getting to that magical 1,000 centuries. Wouldn't that be something in a career? 111. 116. <laughs> Twenty-two. Oh, it doesn't matter. What a response from Ronnie O'Sullivan. Marco 
Liverpool made a magnificent break of 141. The response was that superb century, 122. We're all square. Three frames each. I can't wait for more of this. <laughs> we'll be going through to tomorrow's final. Who's it going to be? The defending champion, Ronnie? Or the man who's been Thank in the you. final before, only to be beaten you, six Frank years Sullivan. ago, Marco Fu. Back we Mario go. Sullivan to break. Well, I'll tell you what, Stephen, uh, when Marco can go back into the arena there, he got a fabulous reception from this terrific crowd. Now, how much quicker can these two players get? Ronnie Sullivan has just equaled Marco. Down to the 16 seconds of shot. Oh, Marco played that red. Thinking it was the only one who could leave. Thank possibly you, Sullivan, please. It. And how often does that happen? One. Wow. One red, one black, Dennis. What do you think? <laughs> you Eight. are naughty, Stephen. Nine. Sixteen. Well, in practice or an exhibition, you play the right-hand side of those two reds, brush off the pack for the black. Still play off this shot. Yep, it has done. Seven. Twenty-four. Thirty-two. Concentrating on the frame. Yeah, the crowd. Thank you, Sutton Law, please. We're buzzing there, but Ronnie, even Marker was smiling. Ronnie, as all players, the main concern is the frame. 30. But that's nice to see. Of course, he's made that 39. magical maximum break on 13 occasions. Just overtook your record, Stephen. 12 you made. Forty-six. Never been in front in the semi-final. Be a good time to take the lead. Forty-seven. didn't see that coming it was just a little bit of a distraction with that red there having to bridge over it that caused him to miss that that's the only reason I could think of why he missed the black the bunch and goes to the right corner but it's a big target if you want to go into them really open things up I think he's going to play for the loose red first six
seven. Another big moment in this match. So often the deciding factor in these matches are not the frames that you, you should win, it's the frames that you shouldn't, the ones that you can pinch. Four. Such a fine line between winning and losing when both players are playing so well. He's just finished a little awkward. He took the opportunity to open more of the reds up there and just having to stretch quite a bit here. Fifty. Little straighter on the black than he would have liked, it. but shouldn't be a problem. Twenty-two. Twenty three. So important this red as clear as everything. No excuses now. Thirty one. Not to win the frame at this visit for Marco Fu. doesn't want to be playing a cannon because they're all available. Rather than forcing that in, just play the nice little shot to leave the one next to the pink for the middle. 39. Yeah, this would be quite a frame to pinch for Marco here. 38. Yeah, he's got a glimpse of Ronnie there. He was shaking his head. 45. And still, he knows at this standard, he can't afford any mistakes. Yeah, we showed you 46. the shot that Ronnie missed because he was bridging over the red. It made the black a little awkward. This was the one. Yeah, you can tell. You don't see him shake his head often, but he knows that uh, Margaret's not going to miss. And the fact that he's played up for a ball colour makes it so much easier for his next positional shot. So he's thinking very clearly at the moment is Marco Fu. Mm, just a little bit harder than he intended. 56. Yeah, be hoping for well, he's playing top spin, so obviously he's got the natural angle just to follow the cushion, so. 58. It's still quite a comfortable shot. Sixty one. So composed and looks Marco Fu. Sixty-five. Just blue to make absolutely certain and it's straightforward. Seventy. You just can't make a mistake in this Seven, game six. the way these boys are playing. Another 
fabulous frame of snooker. Ronnie O'Sullivan had the 47 break, finished a little awkward, missed the black, and that was the end of it. Marco Fu, with that break of 83, is back in the lead again, 4-3 these days yeah but it's the economy of cue ball as mm. well it doesn't move anywhere it's just so tight into the next ball well it's food back in the lead 4-3 both players are getting the break off shot judged to perfection getting the white close to the cushion which means that the red is normally either side is a very difficult pot if you're away from the cushion slightly easier thank you that's enough please well, it looks quite a thin snick this but maybe he's okay One. A little bit too pacey, so he's restricted now to what he can do with the cue ball. The red is to the left of the bunch. Level with the pink, he'd love to have a natural angle and the blue to be able to cannon that full ball. Because then he could just concentrate wholly on the pot. You know, and the position would take care of itself. Normal smooth playing style. One. Eight. Yeah, okay. yeah, just a little bit of movement uh, that time. But he normally does that. But the fact that he was tight on the cushion almost made that slightly more difficult. Finishing short on this red so that he could bring more reds into play when potting this. 15. Sixteen. Just a similar black in the previous frame, but he was bridging over a red that time. Thirty-one. Just managed to avoid canning that red there. That could have spoiled things, but just judged it to perfection. Thirty-nine. OK, 
in the three reds above the black. You could push through the one on the right of those three, leave one to the left corner. Yeah, that's why he's played. It's not worked out though. You can just hear him drop the cue to the ground. He played to, for the 46. cue ball. When he hits this red, he played for the cue ball to keep going through and leave one of those reds to the left corner. Oh, he needs a special pot if he's going to continue here. As we know what happened in the previous frame. He had 47 break and it wasn't enough. This is very tough. Oh, what a shot. 47. <laughs> He'd love to stun through the gap. Get the red to the right, the pink. And that's the... That's the other way of playing it, but he's always going to finish low in this red. 54. So, a good positional shot required here. Fifty-five. Yeah, just didn't quite judge it. When you're canning other reds, as long as a possibility you can finish on the cushion. Shouldn't be a problem covering that red that's over the left or the right corner pocket. Just to make sure he blocks the path through to that and the brown near the cushion has a little bit of insurance <laughs> it's a very healthy lead 54 points but not the man in the form that Marco Fu is but will he get a chance think about here very clever indeed <laughs> acknowledged by Ronnie Tappan on the table okay there's a potable red into the left middle but look where the cue ball's tucked up In the safety shot. Didn't want the cannon on the brown. But that last shot that Marco Fu played <laughs> it shows how well he's thinking, Stephen, to get down and just play that safety shot. Seen it straight away. Brilliant shot. Oh, look at how confident they played that. Look what he's leaving. Should have missed that red. Just floated it in. He's just seen everything, Dennis, hasn't he? Everything's coming very easily. He could he could have played this cue ball down for the black. Possibly Six. not leaving Ronnie something as easy. And taking a difficult red first. He accelerated on that. Chose to take the most difficult red. Yep. 
That's what happens when you decelerate, you miss the pot thin. Wow, that could have been a huge turning point. Had he have pinched that frame after pinching the previous one. So evenly matched now in this semi final. That was the first Seven. small sign of weakness we've seen from Marco Fu in a long time in this match. Twelve. Yes, he would have been a strong favourite had he have taken the frame, but. just sense that this could go to a deciding frame. We've had some fabulous matches 21. all week and quite a few 21. of them going the distance. Twenty-eight. Twenty-nine. Average frame time of under 12 minutes. That's that just shows you the quality of snooker. 38. There's not been much safety play. It's more or less just been whoever gets in first. 41. Fifty-six. He had an early break of 55. He finished the frame off with a break of 63. Marco Fu did have a chance, missed that red with the rest, and we're back all squared again. Four frames each. Four, best of three. Here we go. Once again, good pace with the break off shot. If he's got a slight angle on this red, he might just be tempted because he could drop on the black. The only thing he could possibly leave would be the red that he'd play, but uh, now that, as Hazel said, it's now down to the best of three. Just decided against risking that. And Thank you. Well, the crowd have been fabulous uh, throughout this match. We just don't need them. The single one shouting out at the wrong time just spoils it for both the players. Yeah, the red is closest to the cue ball. You can come off that the left hand side of it thin, leave the cue ball up by the yellow pocket. Hopefully, bring the black into play as well.
was a risky one just to nestle on them and you're trusting that the table's going to run perfectly true and with the nap of the cloth you can always get a little deviation and uh, he didn't judge it as he intended yeah it was the first one negative shot that Marco Fruz played in a long time because he could have come thin off the bunch and brought the cue ball back to where he was at the table but he obviously thought that was the one he played was the easy one to play. Yeah. Can you stop stop moving, please? When he's yeah, on I think there's just someone on the front row was moving around, having a drink, and probably brought some water in with him. Yeah, so you can come off the, the bunch on the thin. It's not that difficult a shot Eight. to take the cue ball back up to where he was playing from. So, as I said, not the way he's been playing so far this afternoon, that no. shot. Yeah, I'm just wondering if that missed red in the last frame with the rest is just... 16. ...affected him. 70. This was the one that, if it goes in, you can see him dropping the cue. He knew it was a great chance. But meanwhile, he knows that Ronnie hasn't finished on the red as nicely as he would have liked. It's all about a cannon here when he hits the black. Can he avoid that? He could. A left-handed as well. I mean, to get that sort of action on the cue ball with your opposite hand, to avoid canning the black was excellent. Since the interval, and we had the interval after Thank three you. frames for that new tip to be put in the queue, he made breaks of 95, 122, or 47, 55, and 63 in the previous frame. And Marco's had breaks of 141 and 83. Gone too far. 46. Big smile there, about six inches further than he intended. Only was solving 46. Judge slightly. He knew straight away he'd hit it too hard. I think he can see enough of the red, but the brown's quite a distraction. The red just nearest the blue, but very awkward queuing along the side of the brown there.
managed to cover that red. It's a tricky situation he was faced with there. sitting with his dad there to the right of him had a chat in the uh, players room with him keyboard player with the Kaiser Chiefs loves his snooker oh, this red to the right of the table it's a long part there's pressure on this That red keeps running, he's safe, or relatively safe. So he got away with that one. There's only one potable red. That's the one that's just between the pink and black. That's the only possible red he could pot. You may cannon into other reds, so it's very difficult. Just the safety shot, don't blame him. Everything in this match, only uh, bouts of safety, and now we're getting that. Just been a string of breaks. Nice to see the tactical side of the game also. Oh! One. Mind, he'd got a good cue ball, but uh, if he can get tight up behind the colour, he could gain a good advantage if we show you this fluke to plant yeah it doesn't want to get too cute with this and try and get too close to the brown oh that cue ball ran off that Not ran off a mile and it only moved the space of just a bit over a foot watch this cue ball go to the right that's shocking Nothing Marco yeah. Fu could have done about that. Sometimes you get it along the uh, balk line where the joint and the slate of the cloth is, but instead of being snookered, if this green goes in, it could be the end of frame, but it's not easy. That was a fabulous pop. You see what he's leaving. I should he have missed oh. it. That would have made though, Dennis. They stuck running up tight behind that brown ball. It's just a little awkward here for the good positional shot. He can't make his mind up. Sometimes you're faced with a shot and you know it's just not a matter of potting the ball and getting nicely on the next colour. Still can't. 
decide which way to play it. And in the end, he made it look very, very easy with a very, very delicate screw shot. Yeah, puff the cheeks. I was glad to get that one out of the way. But very unfortunate for Marco Fu. Okay, he was 30. a long way behind, but had he got the snooker, which he normally would have done without the ball drifting, as we show you it again. And suddenly little things are just going in Ronnie's favour. I mean, he's played fantastic stuff. I think that turning point in the previous round when Marco missed the one with the rest, that would have given him a 5-3 lead if he had to pinch that frame. 21. Yeah, it was like the first time in the match, the, the enormity of the occasion got to him and what he had the opportunity to do. 5-3 ahead. 28. Forty-five. He won the previous frame with breaks of 55 and 63. This is following a similar pattern. He's had breaks of 50. 46 and now this. 52. Sixty. Sixty. Oh, what a shot that was. Using the jaw to get onto the pink. You don't see that very often. Seventy-five. Don't see that shot played very often. And the blacks in as well. So he had an area break of 46. He followed it up with that break of 82. The rocket really has lifted off, and now he's just one frame away from a place in the final. It's 5-4. Best stuff of the whole week since that technical fault, if you like, at the end of frame three. He's one away from booking a place in yet another Masters final. And once again, a good break-off shot. Both players have been breaking off very well. They're finding that ball cushion. They keep leaving a sort of a half chance. But because the white's so close to the cushion, it makes it very, very difficult. Well, this will be interesting to see if Ronnie was tempted by this red to the left corner to drop on the black. And you can see if he misses it, he'd have to be leaving Marco Fu a chance. Well, he might be refusing it where he was aiming the tip of his cue there. Looks like he's going to leave the cue ball on this top cushion. Or is he taking the pot on? Fantastic pot, but yes, that always looked like the natural angle for the cue ball to go. Tremendous pot. 
Yeah, he almost slid off the side of the pack and finished on the black. They might have left well, a red the to the right middle pocket here, the way he's played. I think he was playing to just land on that red. Yeah, he's left a possible pot. But no easy colour available if he takes that on. Yeah, it was quite clever, really. It's going to take some shot for Marco to get on the black. That was always a danger. An element of safety as well. You can see where the cue ball is. And Marco for get a chance. That's a little bit on the thick side, but I think the pace of the table will still take him behind the yellow. <laughs> he would have been trying to get the cue ball tight on the ball cushion, but. That'll do very nicely. That's all he can see. No easy route back to the safety zone from that position. All he could do there. Yeah, and I think this uh, Alexander Palace crowd have taken to Marco Fu. I think the snooker he's produced this week has been scintillating, especially against Judd Trump and. If you knock the balls in and you play a great snooker, you'll get the support of the crowd. And just look at that crowd. What an atmosphere these two players have had to play in this afternoon. 2,000 people in the Alley Pally. Noise when it's needed, silence when the players are at the table. the cue ball going it's okay and have a look at the reds that is what you call an attacking safety shot It's 
certainly no easy escape back down the table from that position. It'd have to be very accurate indeed. Yeah, if he left the white tight on the cushion to the left of the black, he'd cover that red that's on for the right corner, but he's thought of quite a few options. Not often Ronnie thinks about a shot this length of time, but it's very understandable here. said he'd do well to find a path down the table. He found a pot and he found a way back down the table. And he's on the brown to get back up to the reds. Yep. Spotted something on the cue ball, but that is the shot probably of the tournament from that position to pot that and to find the gap. tournament Five. could have been so different if Lang Wembo had potted that black in the first round this man at the table was within a black ball of being knocked out now it's odds on to be making tomorrow's final I'm going for a record seventh Masters title to overtake Stevens six Masters Still at 97%. Someone in his line of sight there. Said, Come on, mate. He's doing the right thing here, just. Thank you, that's enough. Settling himself, he knows the importance of this visit. He really is fired up here. Six. He's just asked someone to keep still. It must be a photographer. It has to be. 16. Well, Marco Fu has just got to sit there and hope that something can go wrong here three. for Ronnie, but he looks very, very focused as uh, Ronnie O'Sullivan. Twenty-four. 
Method. Thirty one. Absolutely 37. fabulous semi-final match this between two players at the top of their form. Very few mistakes have been made. It's the odd error that was costly because of the way either player are playing. And a little bit of misfortune with that. Ball rolling off, and he was going up behind the brown. Forty-four. I don't think I've ever seen Ronnie Sullivan as animated as he is today. Seems every shot has got a different facial expression. The will to win is ferocious at the moment. To get into that final. Forty nine. Well, this is going to finish Thanks. a little awkward. Fifty one in front. He's not many pots away from. Securing a place in the final. It's there. <laughs> Fifty five. <laughs> no, he's going to play it left handed if he can reach it. Why not? Just, Just needs the pink. Six. Forty six. And that is a lovely gesture from 62. Marco Fu there. It's been a fabulous semi-final as I mentioned we said Marco Fu would have to play 63. at the top of his game he did that he's still applauding that's the type of character that Marco is but they have treated this 16. Alexander Palace audience to some brilliant brilliant snooker doesn't matter about the red Marco comes Real forward and a big smile and congratulations Romeo Sullivan that is lovely to see both players it's been a fabulous semi-final, it would have graced any final. But in the end, Ronnie O'Sullivan, well, he was just brilliant. And he goes on to beat Mark Fu by six frames to four. He's in the final. Well, we are applauding in the studio. This Ali Pali crowd, absolutely on its feet. That was truly awesome, gentlemen. Fabulous afternoon in the snooker. Two players at their absolute best. I feel sorry for Marco because nobody else but that. That's how you break a tip in. Oh. Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, what, oh. Against all that adversity, how did you cope with it? Because at that oh. point in the match, you're down. What, oh. what happened? Tell us, go through uh, that first. I, I was, um, it's crazy because um, I was queuing really well and I just thought, I was on a practice table and I just kept getting out of position and I thought, this ain't me. <laughs> if I'd have been queuing bad, I'd have said, you know I've what? I've done that, I've tried that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I knew it wasn't me and I just, it's a song, it wasn't me. <laughs> um, and I just said to my mate, I said, this, we were steaming it. I had my Q-tip over a kettle steaming it because apparently that's meant to soften it up and it didn't have no effect. And um, I just went out there and I just couldn't play any shots. I had no touch, no feel. And I'm a touch and feel player, you know what I mean? And if I ain't got that, I might as well go home, you know? And I just thought, 
I need I need something, so I went. I had to put a new tip on, and I was lucky that it was a decent tip. Do you know what I mean? I can't play, play with a new tip. I can't get. I can't believe you can play that well with a new Sounds tip. Good, John. That's <laughs> <laughs> well, the answer. Absolutely, but I'll just you know what I mean? just to qualify. <laughs> Because I'm not a bad player. <laughs> right. That's crazy. Right. I played well, a bit. The tip, was, the tip was split though, because you changed uh, it. No, the tip was um, it was just gone. It was completely gone, and um, you know it was uh, it just it just couldn't take no chalk. I miscued five six times. It was like chalking a bit of slate. I said to my friend, I said, listen, and he's not a snooker player. I said, listen to this. I'm just chalking it. And he went, it's like a bit of slate, isn't it? And I went, oh, it's not me. I'm not imagining it, you know, and. Uh, so um, yeah, I just, I just, you know, I, I was, I was gonna wait for the interval, but it was so gone. They said, look, you can take the interval now, and I was like, sweet. How, how risky going for a brand new one because Joe's no, no risk at all because no I couldn't have won that match. I would never, I'd have been there all day trying to beat him. Oh, he's right. scoring too heavy. He's playing too well, and I knew that unless I raised the gear, I was going home, mate. He was gonna knock me out. So there was like, there was no. You know, it was the only decision to make. OK, well, 95 immediately when you came back into the arena, then you, yeah. you threw in a 1-2-2. Two, two. But there was a moment in frame eight where he missed with the rest yeah. when he was up here. And if he'd cleared out, you were on 55, yeah. I grant you. But it was just at that point we maybe saw a little bit of frailty, and that was such a turning point in the match. Oh, come on, you know, it's four all, the Masters, 2,000 people. I mean, he's 50 odd behind. I mean, we're, we're capable of missing anything. You know, he's, he's, got, he's got no problem with bottle. He's a tournament winner. Yeah, he feathered up a little bit more, but... Listen, anyone in the world, in the history of the game, could have missed that. Yeah. Uh, they'll tell you this, you know, yeah. it's not easy. And if also, he'd have had his hand on the table, I fancy he'd clear it up. Yeah. And also, it. you must have been delighted, although not really great, but when all of a sudden he played the roll-up and it seemed to uh, perhaps hit a finger mark and from a strange um, situation, you could have had you behind I don't know the what brand. happened there. I, I can't yeah, remember. Is, yeah. Listen, listen, I mean, at the end of the day, if, you're, if you don't play well, the other guy can have luck. Um, if you play well, the other guy can have luck and get bits of this, but if you play well, you can overcome it. That's what I believe. So I never look at like balls rolling over here, little kicks. I had a lot of luck against Neil Robinson, but he should have still beat me because I weren't very good. Well, funny enough, we were discussing the level at which you played today, how that compared with your previous matches against Neil and Liang. Yeah. I just wonder what percentage of improvement you felt you I'm made. actually, that's the thing, I'm actually queuing Q and I. It was just a tip, and I just said three years ago, I said, I'm never taking another tip off, and I've stuck with this tip, and it was a terrible tip, and I, and I stuck with it and stuck. It and I was like, you know what, it's coming off, you know what I mean? But that's, you know, um, I, that's, sometimes you just have to make a, an instinctive decision. Everyone around me was like, what the hell are you doing? I was like, listen, I, you know, you have to live by the sword. You, you, look, like, you look like you really enjoyed that match. Yeah, listen, it's probably the best match I've ever won, I've got to be honest with you, given the circumstances, the way he's playing, Fired massive up, yeah. tournament, um, new tip. I didn't, you know, I fancied the job. But even with a new tip, I thought, if I can get like a little bit of feel of it, I'm playing well enough here to to counteract that. Do you know what I mean? If you're playing well, you can get half get away with a new tip. If you're queuing bad, you put a new tip on, it's over, Mars. You know, you ain't going to be able to do anything. But, but you um, know, the, the amazing thing is, you, yeah, yeah, well, nice. you're in your 12th final. And oh, yeah, I've only won six, though, so it's not a very good strike rate, is it? I've lost well, half of them, so that's not a very good... Well, you can still take this record on your own. And yeah. I just wonder who you fancy tonight, if it's going to be care. Joe or Barry? I, I, don't, I really don't care, you know what I mean? To me, I've just thought like, I've had a Saturday afternoon now. What else will I be doing on a Saturday afternoon? 2,000 people. <laughs> Unbelievable. Lucky, lucky boy. And um, I'm going to be a lucky boy. I've got all day tomorrow. And, um, you know, I've had a great week so far. And uh, last year, I was really under pressure because I'd done my back in and mm -hmm. I was like doing these interviews and you thought I was obviously losing the plot. And it wasn't that. It's just that I, I didn't think I was ever going to be able to play properly ever again because I'd done my back in so bad. So this year, I'm just so relaxed because I think, you know what, I've got perspective now. And Steve Peters saying, don't tell anyone you're playing bad. I said, I'm not playing bad, so I just can't get on the shot properly last year. So I've come through a lot and I just feel like everything's a bonus now. Listen, don't get me wrong, I'm still switching out there and I want to win, you know. But well, i tell you what, the, Ronnie, the fierce competitor, was on show there, the fist pump at the end. This really means a lot. Well, because it meant a lot to me and I didn't want to, like, you know, over kind of, because Marco's such a lovely guy. But I just felt like all the way from that match, I thought, I can win this, but I know I've got to play well and I know I can't make many mistakes. And I had a new tip on and I, a, a little shot was side was missable. And I thought, you know what, I, it's up against me, but I can, f I can do this. So when I'd done it, I was so relieved because now I've got another day to get used to the tip. Sorry, I'll be quiet now. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to be quiet. We've got another semi-final this evening, right? Yeah, we'll and I'm sure it. you'll be you will enjoying it as well. What an awesome performance. It's been an Thank absolute so pleasure much. to Thank watch. You. Thank, Thank you very much, Ronnie.